Okay, let's talk about why dx dy is equal to r dr d theta. And we need this whenever we are working with a double integral that needs change of coordinates going from rectangular to polar. Just like the famous Gaussian integral, you need this. And the usual question is, why is there an extra r? Well, I'm going to show you. First, let's look at the rectangular case. When we have dx dy, dx is just a small change in the x, just like this. And then dy is just a small change in y, just like that. However, they are meant to be very, very small. But if I draw it too small, nobody can see it, right? And when we multiply this and that together, we get this area, and that's just a small change in the area. So that's dA, and then we are done. Now, let's take a look at the polar case. For the polar case, let's say we have a point right here first. We will need to know the radius from here to here, the r technically. Yeah? And then I'm going to extend it a little bit, so like that. That will be the dr. And then I'm going to rotate it. So I'm going to have it like this, like that. And then I'm just going to have it like this. This right here is just a small change in the angle, so I will call this angle d theta. This is meant to be a very tiny change of the angle. Likewise, this is meant to be a very tiny extension, but if it's too small, nobody can see it. Now we have to find this area, which is the area of a curved rectangle that we went over last time. And some people call this a polar rectangle. Yeah? Last time I showed you guys the formula, you will need to know the width of this, and then you multiply by the r length in the middle from here to here. However, in this situation, we have the width already, and yes, you can still find the middle from here to here, that's okay, but r, dr right here, but dr right here, it's very small. So it's actually okay if you just look at this portion here, and this portion is just what? r right here times d theta for this arc. Again, last time I know, I found the middle part because I was following the formula and it was okay because dr is very small. Here, it's okay too. So now, as you guys can see, the dA right here is simply this times that. And this is the reason why we have this r and then let's put on dr after that and then we have the d theta at the end. Just like that. However, there's also the Jacobian that I want to talk about with you guys. Because you guys know x equals r times cosine theta and then y equals r times sine theta. These two are the main formulas to go from rectangular to polar, right? So, how does this work? Here, imagine that if you are doing a regular integral square root of x squared plus 1. For this one right here, you will have to do a trick sub. You pick x to be tangent square, no, you pick x to be tangent theta. After this, you are going to differentiate both sides. So dx equals the derivative of this, which is secant squared theta d theta. We can simply take the derivative of this because we only have one variable here. However, we have x and y, but on the right-hand side, r is a variable, likewise theta, likewise r is variable, and theta here. So how can we take the derivative in this sense? We can still do it, but we need a Jacobian. And you will see this thing. dx is equal to not just d theta, but we also have this thing. What's this thing? This is just like the Jacobian. It's like the extra factor that we need when we are doing the substitution. So now, this is the Jacobian matrix. What it says is that you are going to look at the first equation, which is x, and you will do the partial derivative with respect to the first variable. So partial of x with respect to r, and then do the same thing, but next time with respect to theta. And then do it again, but with y. 
and then at the end we are going to find the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix and that is the Jacobian and then at the end you will see that you put it right here but once you put it right here you apply an absolute value because nobody says R right here has to go first you could have put down um, D theta right here you can switch the these two rows but if you switch these two rows the determinant of this matrix is going to be negative so at the very end we'll just apply the absolute value once you put it down with the differential so in this case let's just do the partial derivative partial x with respect to r we look at r treat that as the variable so differentiating r we get 1 and then we just have cosine theta so this is 1 times cosine theta next we are going to look at the x equation and then treat theta as the variable differentiating cosine theta we get negative sine theta and still multiply by r so we have negative sine theta but then we still have the r and then continue differentiate r so we get 1 so 1 times sine theta and then differentiate sine theta right with respect to theta we get cosine theta and then multiply by r so it's r cosine theta and then we are going to find the determinant of this and the determinant for a 2 by 2 matrix is just this times this which we have cosine theta times r times another cosine which is cosine squared and then we are going to subtract this times that and this is uh, minus r and a sine times sine so it's sine squared theta now notice both of them have r so we can factor that out and then this right here is cosine squared theta minus minus of course we get our plus and then do we see our good friend again yes what's this yes it's just one so ladies and gentlemen this right here is just equal to r it's past the already so you don't really need an absolute value but i'll still put it down anyway dy dx equals you take the absolute value of the jacobian but if r is positive you don't worry about that and then you multiply by dr d theta and you can just drop the absolute value in this case that's it